Soul of the Duelist was released on October 1st, 2004. This set introduced the level mechanic, a series of cards that can send themselves to the graveyard to level up into more powerful versions of themselves once certain conditions are met. This was also the first TCG set to not include secret rares and instead introduced a new rarity, Ultimate Rare, which could be a special variant of any card in the set that was rare, super rare, or ultra rare. Additionally, Dark Beginning 1 was the first ever reprint set released on October 12th, 2004. While this set primarily contained reprints from Legend of Blue Eyes to Labyrinth of Nightmare, one new card stood out in particular being Makira the Destructor. And if that weren't enough, the Game Boy Advance game Destiny Board Traveler was released on October 26th, 2004, introducing a brand new meta-relevant promo card, Didi Assailant. And finally, a new ban list came into effect on October 1st, 2004. Although the first Forbidden list was announced over a month ago, the changes didn't actually go into effect until this specific date and also included the following limitations. Dark Magician of Chaos, Morphing Jar, Protector of the Sanctuary, Mystical Space Typhoon, and Torrential Tribute were all now limited to one copy each. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh's past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourself in because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Well, it's time for another episode, and how do I keep ending up in this shirt? <sighs> okay, two weeks ago, Alex FDK'd me twice with Magical Scientist, and not a lot I can do about that. Last week, maybe we could have taken the set if we had played just a little bit better, something like flipping the Ojama Trio in response to the change of heart, but there's just so many decision points and I can't play perfectly the whole time. However, if we play a deck with, say, fewer decision points, then maybe my two brain cells and I can scrape a best of three out from under Simo's nose. What you see in front of you is five lists. This format includes Chaos Warrior and Warrior Toolbox. DD Warrior Lady is still at three at this point in history, and it's a good card. As a result, those two decks really dominate the metagame. But they're not all that's viable. We've also got Protector OTK, which is a Protector of the Sanctuary combo deck that aims to exhaust an opponent's ability to draw cards, then force them to do so. We've got Chick Makura OTK, a deck that we could not find a list for but can probably reverse engineer. It uses a combination of cards that include Makura the Destructor, which allows you to activate trap cards from your hand, Dark Scorpion Chick the Yellow, which upon dealing damage returns a card on the field to the hand, targeting your own copy of Call of the Haunted, which is being used to reborn the Chick the Yellow. This creates an infinite loop and deals a thousand damage at the same time. But what I'm really angling for this week and what I intend to use all of my spins on is last turn. I've played last turn a couple of times and I have I, I've done it very poorly. I there's 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 no use blowing smoke up my butt. I really, really, really misplayed. I would like one last chance at last turn. We'll see what the wheel has in store. All right, three, two, one, let's go. And we're going to give it a ton of spins here. Okay, so I'm not playing Protector. The Sorry, Alex. I know you really want to see this combo deck go off, but I have zero faith in it. Let's use one of our two remaining spins. Yeah, I feel more comfortable with this than taking another spin. All right, let's get to deck building. You know, there is no better feeling in Yu-Gi-Oh than sending an opponent's attack directly back at their face with a magic cylinder and winning the match off the back of it. Feels fantastic to be back in the winner's circle, and we have an entirely new loaded wheel of decks that we might see this time around. We have a new limited list, we have a new set release, we actually have a few more products being incorporated into the series now as well, and so now we have some more decks to choose from. We do have a few of the decks from before, but we have some new inclusions because we wanted to change it up and add some more diversity because during this time in Yu-Gi-Oh's history there was actually
actually a much wider breadth of decks that you could have chosen from, and so we want to keep with that theme. First up, we still have Protector OTK. There might be one more opportunity to play this, so if it does come up, I think it'd be hilarious. Chaos Warrior is the version of Chaos we're going to be going with this time around. I believe DD Warrior Lady is getting limited in the near future, and Chaos Warrior is actually a very cool integration of both the Warrior archetype and the Chaos archetype into one. We also have Last Turn OTK. I'm sure Joseph's going to still be fighting for this. Warrior Toolbox, this is actually one of my personal favorite decks of all time because this is really the first deck I got to play with as a child, and so I'm not going to lie, I think I want this more than anything else. And then we have this nonsense. We have Chick Makiura OTK. So Makiura the Destructor was released in Dark Beginning 1, which was a reprint set, which was right after the release of Soul of the Duelist. We do not have Exchange of the Spirit because thankfully the TCG actually banned Makiura before Exchange of the Spirit became legal. And I think it was actually like a jump promo of all things. But nonetheless, there still were ways to abuse this card before it ultimately got banned on the next list. And Dark Scorpion Chick the Yellow is one of those ways. If we spin it, we'll talk about it, but let's just go ahead and get a nice few spins going here. I actually have several potential spins and respins here, so we're going to see what our first pick is, and we shall go from the... Oh my god. I have to do it, right? I, this might be the only chance we get to play this deck, period. Oh, Joseph is going to hate me. So here's the list, and I think what's most surprising about this deck is that outside of two copies of Chick the Yellow and two Makura the Destructor... It just looks good. It's a heads-up, toolboxy, warrior deck. It's even making use of some of the unfair things that existed in this format, like three copies of DD Warrior Lady before they're inevitably set to one. Shockingly, there's a lot of room to be able to just play good cards in a combo deck. I'll go through the individual pieces of this puzzle, but keep in mind that we may be able to scrape a best of three without ever running into the interaction between Makura the Destructor, Chick the Yellow, and Call of the Haunted. We'll begin with a copy of Blade Knight, fantastic normal summon. It's usually 2,000 attack, and it negates the effects of flip monsters that are destroyed by battle with this card. We've got Breaker the Magical Warrior, who despite his name is not a warrior, but he's a little too good to pass up. Cyberjar is a piece of removal, which is why we're playing him. We really want to be resolving Chick the Yellow's effect, and to do that, we need a clear board state. We have way more monsters than our opponent, so Cyberjar will usually facilitate board states where Chick can get in. It'll also send Makura to the graveyard, which is good. We're on DD Assailant, just a generally good beater. Three copies of DD Warrior Lady, conditional removal, beating. I mean, the card is so good. There's a reason this card was limited for as long as it was. Chick the Yellow is problematic. When this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can activate one of these effects, look at the top card of their deck and return it to the top or bottom, the effect will never be using, and target a card on the field, return that target to the hand. Now that does not say your opponent's cards, which means we can return our own copy of Call of the Haunted. If Makura the Destructor's effect activation has been fulfilled, then we can activate that Call of the Haunted again to bring back Chick the Yellow. It's good. I don't know if it's worth building an entire deck around, I suppose we'll find out. Chick the Yellow only has a thousand attack points, which means it's going to be devastating trying to get in. If it's not over something like a Magician of Faith, it's not likely to happen. Speaking of the Dark Scorpion Burglars, we've got one more, Don Zeluk, one copy of this bad boy who can discard cards from our opponent's hand or send cards from the top of their deck to the graveyard. We're playing an Exiled Force, why not? We're on Rota after all, and two Magician of Faith. Cards just too good to pass up playing. We're on two Makur the Destructor, who is a warrior. Don't know why that is. Now what you're looking at now is the eroded version of the card. Back in the day, this card read, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can activate trap cards from your hand this turn. This was changed so that people didn't FTK their opponents, though I maintain Makura could come back without errata. You can check out my videos if you'd like to see an example of what it can do. Spoiler alert, the answer is not much. We've got a copy of Morphing Jar, which is... Fine. It discards Makura to the graveyard. Anything that cycles our hand is generally quite good. And because we're cycling our hand so often, we do want to be playing Sinister Serpent, even though we don't have access to Graceful Charity yet. Tribe Infecting Virus is in here as well for similar reasons. We've got two copies of Book of Moon. We really need Monster Removal. This is almost Monster Removal. We've got a copy of Card Destruction, a Change of Heart. Now that is Monster Removal. A Confiscation, an Emergency Provisions for a reason that I will explain in a second. We're playing Heavy Storm, and here is the reason. One copy of Mirage of Nightmare. This card allows you to, during your opponent's standby phase, draw until you have four cards in your hand, then discard the same number during your standby phase. However, it plays very interestingly with Mystical Space Typhoon, which is currently limited, and Emergency Provisions. If you destroy your own copy of Mirage of Nightmare, you get to keep everything. We're on a copy of Nobleman of Crossout, a copy of Painful Choice. This card is not fantastic at the time. There's not a lot of monsters that get benefits from going from the deck to the graveyard, but Makura the Destructor is one of them. More importantly, it's good for chaos setups. I mean, just a generally strong card that I'm happy to be playing. Pot of Greed, Premature Burial, Double Reinforcement of the 
army smashing ground its removal snatch deal forceful sentry called the haunted reckless greed is a suspect include at one at this point but it plays very nicely with makura the destructor so we'll try it out ring of destruction and torrential tribute in the side deck we are in dd crazy beast we're on a copy of twin headed behemoth not because this card is good but because i wanted to let you in on this piece of information you know why this card was limited has nothing to do with the power it has everything to do with the fact that it is a once per duel effect and if it gets shuffled back into the deck then there's no way to determine which one has activated its effect or not it's very interesting anyway we've got a copy of book of moon a copy of mage power three copies of metamorphosis three copies of scapegoat that's right scapegoat and metamorphosis are legal but they weren't really in vogue yet we've got a swords of revealing light a magic cylinder and three solemn judgments so pretty excited about this deck i think it can win without the dark scorpion chick the yellow combo and i think it will do so that said if alex is playing something a little slower maybe we'll get a chance to show it off well this is probably as bad as it gets but introducing makiura otk so the whole the whole purpose of this combo is to get both Makiura the Destructor as well as Dark Scorpion Chick the Yellow into the graveyard. When Makiura is sent to the graveyard, we can then activate trap cards from our hand for the duration of the turn. And so by having Chick the Yellow in the graveyard, we can then activate Call of the Haunted. Call of the Haunted can then resurrect Chick the Yellow, and assuming our opponent doesn't have a field, we can attack with Chick the Yellow that will trigger the effect to target a card on the field, return it to our hand, bounce Call of the Haunted, and then since we still have Makiura's lingering effect, activate it again and do that seven more times to win the game. Seems simple enough and there's no way things could go wrong, but let's go ahead and do the card by card. First up, three copies of Cat of Ill Omen. This is a flip monster that says choose a trap from your deck and place it on top of your deck. We can then take the Call of the Haunted and Book of Taiyu the Cat of Ill Omen, so that way we get the Call of the Haunted on turn one. Then if we have something like Pot of Greed or any of our draw cards, we will then immediately be able to get Call of the Haunted to our hand. It's janky, but it works. Blackluster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning is in here because we do have some dark and light synergy, so I figure we have an alternate win condition when this ultimately fails. Three copies of Chick the Yellow and three Machia the Destructor, and one Morphing Jar just so that way we can turbo through some of our cards a bit quicker. Also works pretty good with Book of Taiyu. We also have three Thunder Dragon to thin the deck a little bit and get us closer to our win condition. For the spells, three Book of Taiyu, a card destruction just to be able to dump our hand and draw a new one. Same thing for three copies of Reload. Two copies of Drag Down into the Grave. We don't really care if our combo pieces are in the graveyard. In fact, we want them there. The only card we don't want there is Call of the Haunted, so that's the worst case scenario, but otherwise this just allows us to cycle for another card. Three copies of True Nade because we can blow away the back row, same with Heavy Storm. Painful Choice plus Call of the Haunted is the combo, so that is the dream if we can pull those. Pot of Greed for drop power, reinforcement of the army to get either Makira or the Dark Scorpion Chick the Yellow. Three copies of Reload, same reason for card destruction, and then two copies of Tribute to the Doom. This is like a janky way to trigger Makira if we have no way to actually get him to the graveyard on turn one, but it works and it's pretty much the best card we have in this instance. I guess you could play something like Mystic Walk, I suppose, but we don't have time for logical thinking. Next for the traps, Call of the Haunted. It's pretty much a combo piece, so we need it, but it's only at one, which really sucks. Three Jar of Greed. This is cool with Makiura because it just says draw three. Two copies of Regeki Break. Again, kind of the same reason as Tribute to the Doomed. It's a way that we can get Makiura or get Dark Scorpion Chick the Yellow into the graveyard so we can get the combo started. If we Makiura, we can use this on our turn that we do that, so we don't have to set it for a turn, so that's nice. And then the one Reckless Greed for some more draw power. The side deck is just a bunch of cards I'm most likely going to side in after game one when this deck ultimately does not work. We will see what happens. So we have a Blade Knight, a Breaker, two DD Assailant, two DD Warrior Lady, Magical Scientist, and the accompanying gang down here in the extra deck. One Change of Heart, Confiscation, Premature Burial, Snatch Steel, Bottomless Trap Hole, Magic Cylinder, Ring of Destruction, and Torrential Tribute. This is going to be a very interesting episode, and honestly, if we can pull this off, I will be genuinely shocked. But ladies and gentlemen, it's time to duel. Joseph, welcome back to another episode. A whole new wheel of new decks to choose from and plenty of new jank for you to pick from as well. How are you feeling about this episode? Yeah, thanks so much for including Protector of the Sanctuary again. I was afraid I wasn't going to get a chance to play that deck. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Of course, you can see my uh, card sleeve say Warrior Supremacy, but that gives you no information about the deck I'm playing. We have a bunch of, of Warrior decks. I mean, I think it's cool, though, that Warriors actually did have their chance to shine all the way back in 2005. I mean, obviously, Obviously, you know, nowadays, warriors are known as one of the best archetypes, but people now really get to understand where that originated from. And yeah, I think it's cool to show that off. But obviously, this doesn't mean we're playing warrior decks. There's a few decks on here that I don't think play a single warrior. So 
Guess we'll just have to see what happens. <laughs> Simo, are you playing? If you last turn me, I will not forgive you. I guess we'll see. I guess oh. we'll see. Let's go and shout out our patron, though, Mr. Kelson Mays. Thank you so much for your support. And let's see how that rock, paper, scissors fares for you. You're on a rock, paper, scissors streak, aren't you? I'm on a bit of a streak. I'm ready for my streak to be destroyed. Sticking to my guns Ooh. on this one. Let's see. Okay. I'm just hope sure holding about that, that hope on the die. Oh, my God. <laughs> This is the most the interaction is we've had in well. weeks. Let's go! <laughs> uh, All determined by the die. All right. Well, I don't know. I, I kind of like the concept of having the battle phase. I don't think going second is too bad, but I will be picking first. I mean, you might want the battle phase if you're playing one of these decks, technically speaking. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, this is an interesting hand. Uh, I'm going to begin my turn pretending that we're still playing a 2003 format. Let's start with a confiscation. Well, if this doesn't give it away, I don't know what will. Uh, pay your thousand life points, sir, and go ahead and take a look at this. Oh. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I think I think we're playing the same deck. No way. But we went in very different directions. You're playing some bad cards. <laughs> oh, of course we are. We're playing terrible cards. <laughs> oh my. Ooh. Hmm. Well, I like the idea of sending Makura the Destructor to the graveyard while you have no traps in hand. Book of Taiyu is an enabler for some of your combos. Tribute to the Doomed, of course, could prevent me from losing later on. Uh, I am going to take, I believe, the Tribute. Interesting. Okay, it's gone. Uh, so here's why. I have Forceful Sentry, too. Ah, uh, makes sense. Are you going to shuffle the Makira back? Uh, yes, I'm planning on it. So it's Taiyu and then two Thunders. Correct. It is a fantastic opener. Chat, if I lose this game, I don't want to hear anything from you. All right? <laughs> this is the well, greatest can, hand I could have ever hoped for. Okay. You can feel assured that Graceful Charity is still banned. So I can't go Pot of Greed into Graceful Charity. <laughs> you can make one of them happen. All right, we'll draw. That is just about as bad as I expected. I'm going to pitch this Thunder Dragon and grab another one. We do have one. And for what it's worth, you can, in fact, pitch Thunder Dragon at this time to fail to find. So if you'd like to dump I... your entire hand in the graveyard, go ahead. You know, we're not playing Infernity, so I think I'll go ahead and take a pass on that. I'll just go ahead and set a card and pass the turn. Interesting. Uh, I No reason you'd set the Taiyu. Maybe you would. All right, I'll draw for turn. Ooh, who is the beatdown? I'm going to normal summon a copy of DD Warrior Lady. Sure, makes sense. Uh, you know what? I'm going to flip up a copy of Magician of Faith, and uh, let's get that confiscation back to hand if you'll allow it. Yeah, that's fine. All right, I don't imagine there's too much good in here to play with. It's two copies of Thunder Dragon and one other card, but still better than not using it. All right, and it is as you expected. Ah, so the set card is the one you drew. I'm going to take the Book of Taiyu. I can imagine a scenario where that might come up. I think the Thunder Dragons are fine in your grip. I appreciate it. All right, we'll go to the battle phase and get in for 1,800 if you'll allow it. I'll take the 1,800. That's perfectly fine. All right, I'll pass back turn to you. Good luck, Duelist. All right, let's see if we can get anything good. You know, that's not terrible. Let's go ahead and drag down to the grave. Let's take a look what you've got this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. I wish I'd set my hand. Didn't know you were on drag down. Uh, here's my hand. I beg you to pick the Sinister Serpent. Uh, no, I'll go ahead and take the emergency provisions, honestly. And uh, my hand is just two Thunder Dragons, so uh, I'll just go ahead and pitch one of them. Well, I don't know if I like that one. The, the one on the left is looking real suspicious. Okay, sure. I'll go ahead and get rid of the left one instead. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. I will draw my card. Ooh. And I'll draw mine as well. Let's see if that'll help. It probably won't. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> I will draw for turn. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is a ripperoni. All right. We'll, we'll Did I the give you phase. the combo with drag down? <laughs> I'm going to normal summon a copy of tribe. Sure. I'm not really playing around torrential tribute here, given that there's only one copy available. Let's see if we can get in for a ton of damage. All right. So this will be a total of 34. I if suppose I'll take it, it all. <laughs> I will set one card and pass it back to you, buddy. All right. I don't know what I could possibly... I mean, that's okay, I guess. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> now I want to think. Oh, dang it. I thought we were going to get out mm. of this game without either of us having to use a brain cell, but here we are. Unfortunately, yes. Uh, I actually will just set a card and I will pass a turn. That's interesting. All right, I will draw for turn. Eh, no need to overextend. I'll proceed to the battle phase and see if we can get in. Okay, let's see. On the attack declaration for 
DD Warrior Lady. I'm going to activate Rygeki Break. Ooh, wow, that's rough, but uh, believable. I, I understand why you have to do that. Okay, to the grave she goes. Yeah, so I'll get rid of her. I will take the remaining 1,900, I believe. Yep, and then I might as well try to go for it. Let's flip up Call of the Haunted targeting DD Warrior Lady. That's pretty good. And we'll see if we can get in again. Well, you're going to meet a Call of the Haunted of my own. And fortunately, I do have some Thunder Dragons that can mount a defense here. <laughs> oh, that's frustrating. Hmm. As much as I want to banish your Thunder Dragon, I think it's actually better not to do so. In main phase two, I will activate the effect of tribe infecting virus, pitching my sinister serpent you know about and calling Thunder. Unfortunate. Yeah, it's going to go. That will also take the call of the haunted. I'll set one card and it is your turn. Draw your last really, pathetic card. I was really hoping you'd forget that tribe infecting virus had an effect. And uh... <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, would that have... No, I don't think that would have been it. No, you you got this one, but Trunade was in my hand. So if I didn't have to use Call of the Haunted, I could have bounced it and I drew Rhoda for turn. Whoa. So Rhoda could have gotten me to Makira. I don't think I, I didn't have Chick, so I don't think it would have mattered. But no way to Chick, I was still very frightening. It was very close. Yeah, it was very close, but I will give you this game one. Joseph, did we really get the same fucking deck of all things? Like, is, is, has that ever even happened before in this entire series? I can't uh, even recall if it has. Outside of the tier zero formats, I don't think so. Um, did you use any respins? Uh, no, actually. I got it on my first one. Did you? Absolutely. I'm not playing Protector <laughs> of the Sanctuary. <laughs> oh, God. But the fans aren't going to get to see it then. Ah, oh, it's okay. It's I okay. think that's you don't for the best. Folks, if you thought Trickstar Drollenlock looping was exciting, ooh, buckle your seatbelts, buddy. I think people getting to see an antiquated version of Trickstar Reincarnation looping is probably a good thing, but... I'll tell you what, uh, if that's we obviously reach debatable. $20 million on the Patreon, we'll do a live episode where I get Protector <laughs> looped twice. Million. I'm down. I'm down. I think the patrons might be down for that, too. We'll have to see. Good luck, buddy. I will draw, and uh, I am... I don't know what to say now. How's it going? Oh good, good hand? Looking good? Uh, it's something. It's... <laughs> Definitely something. I think that is miserable. That is so miserable. Ah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna fire off painful choice. Oh my God, am I dead here? Oh, you didn't give yourself the battle phase, you fool. No, ah. no. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I don't think I'm dead regardless, or you're not dead regardless, because yeah. even if I had the battle phase, I uh, there's some problems. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of a Makira the Destructor. Yeah. I'm going to get rid of a Chick the Yellow. I'm going to yeah. get rid of a Chick the Yellow. Ooh. I'm also going to get rid of a Chick the Yellow, as it yeah. turns out. Uh -huh. And I think for my last card, these are all terrible. I'll go with a copy of Giant Trunade, I suppose. <laughs> Oh, well, this is an interesting one. I can cut you off Makiura here. Obviously, it doesn't matter turn one. You could pitch it with something like Regeki Break to get it into the graveyard, but you've got all three chicks in there. Did you draw the Call of the Haunted? You'll have to find out. Ah, huh. Well, given the composition of my hand, I'm going to give you the True Nade, in fact. Okay, I'll take it. Thank you very much. And I think I will lead with a set monster. I will set two cards face down, and I will pass the turn. That telegraphs that we do have the Geki break. You maybe didn't send a bunch of Makura because you have some in your hand. Alex, what is going on on your side of the field? <laughs> Don't worry about what's going on on my side of the field. Worry about what's on your side of the field. I am worried. We're going to begin with a copy of DD Warrior Lady. Do you have a response? I have zero response. <laughs> All right, let's see what that set card is. It is a DD Warrior Lady of my own, so you will take a hundred damage. And would you like to banish? Uh, mm, yeah, yeah. Let's get them out of here. Okay, they are gone. All right, second main. I am going to set two, three, and then activate Mirage of Nightmare. Oh no, that is not good. And we'll pass turn. I guess I'm going to put you on Gotta Have It. All right, so standby phase, you will draw three cards. Do, 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 do. <sighs> oh, they're three good ones. Okay. 
Main one. Yeah, now that I know about the Mirage of Nightmare, now I know why you were so happy to give me that giant true nade. It makes perfect sense. No, 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 play it. Find out what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll uh, I think I'll take a pass on that. I think I'll go ahead and summon another copy of DD Warrior Lady, though. Oh, there she is. Uh, that is fine with me. I'll attempt to enter the battle phase and swing for 15. I'll take it. All right, and uh, I'll just pass. Go ahead, go to your turn. Show me the emergency provisions. I don't have it. Mm. Oh. Let me, let so me are we think. gonna be discarding? Let me think. In draw phase, I'm gonna activate Reckless Greed. Okay, you're gonna dig a little bit deeper, sure. We're gonna find it. We did not find it. Okay. All right, so we are gonna discard three of these cards at random. Oh my God. There are some cards here that if I do, I win. I literally just win <laughs> if you discard some of these cards. If you discard others, okay. I have no way to win. All right, so uh, go ahead and shuffle your hand. I have to pick the first one because you have seven. So I am going to pick this one. Uh, okay, so go to hell. That is Blade Knight. <laughs> All right, fine. Okay, so now we have two more to discard, so I'll use the die from here on out. So sure. we're going to go with this one. All right, that's Dark Scorpion Chick the Yellow. That's not good. And uh, for this last one here, hopefully it is not the Makira. It is not the Makira. It is Nobleman of Crossout. Okay, fair enough. However, oh, God, I almost have it. Oh, dude, I'm so close. Oh my God, I'm so close. I can taste it. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. I have to think very hard about this. I mean, you could just pass and hope you get it next turn. <laughs> well, I won't have a draw phase, so I think it's pretty unlikely. Oh, that's true. Reckless Greed is a card, yes. But you get the Mirage Trigger. I do get the Mirage Trigger. Now that's, you see I mean, my problem. depending how many cards you can dump out of your hand, that's what matters. Because right now you won't get anything off of Mirage. All right. Okay. I think I, I think I have figured it out. Okay. All right. We're going to normal summon Tiv and with priority, we'll activate the effect. Okay. So you have to pitch for cost. Shocking. Okay. Imagine you're going to call Warrior here. Uh, you would imagine correctly. I think, hmm, I think that's fine. So my Warrior Lady will go to the graveyard. Okay. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me pull up the old errata for Makiura. Doesn't it's activate. Just, if, this card doesn't activate. It doesn't activate. activate. Are you kidding no, me? No, it does not activate. It just happens. What a <laughs> stupid card. Oh my god. Fair and balanced Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> In fucking deed. All right, we're gonna activate a uh, premature burial. Okay. And I will target my copy of Blade Knight. Uh, that's fine. No response there. All right, I will set one card and we will proceed to the I, battle phase. Oh, I actually did have something on after that resolved. Oh, okay. Um, at uh, resolution, what would you like to do? I would like to torrential the board here. Uh, I will activate Solemn Judgment. From the hand! <laughs> <laughs> oh, the literal oh, hand trap! Oh my trap. god, yeah, oh. fine, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that makes this Blade Knight play a lot easier. Uh, let's get in here. Yeah, and that Blade Knight actually goes up to 2,000 as well. Look at you. Broken. Right, I helped man. you. <laughs> I'm going to set one, and you are good to go, buddy. What a disaster. All right, I'll draw. Get your four cards off of Mirage of Nightmare, sir. Oh, I will. Oh, they suck. Oh, they're oh, so fantastic. bad. <laughs> Glad to hear it. I'm going to activate Giant True Nade. Uh, yeah, that's annoying, but sure. Okay. I think it's hilarious because you're going to fully regret that you gave me that giant trunade off the painful choice because Black Luster Soldiers coming down, Joseph. <laughs> oh, well, that's not fair. You didn't tell me you were playing I... good cards. Oh, this is 100% fair. I don't know what you're talking about. Battle phase, hit in, oh, hit directly God. for a second attack, and that is the game. Ouch. So you're telling me there was a ban list where they hit all the cards that ended the game too early and they never hit BLS? Really? They did hit it. They hit oh, it to eventually. one. eventually. Oh, hit it to <laughs> one. That makes me feel a lot better losing to it. All right. The battle phase be damned. I'm going first. Okay. Good luck to you, sir. And wow, this is a hand. Uh, uh, oh, uh, same. All right. Uh, we're going to lead with confiscation once again. So uh, let's see what you got there. Uh, well, it doesn't look like I'm going to be doing this twice in a row because I know what the target's going to be. Whoa, this hand is crazy if you draw Makura. Uh, but. <laughs> 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 ha -ha -ha. 
Well, shoot. Um, I guess, you know, this is a big shocker. I believe that I am going to be in fact. Oh, you know what? Is there a world where I take Reckless? Not if you've only got one copy. You're just going to lock yourself out of the game. Yeah, get the BLS out of here. I'm not losing to this gonna, again. Th there's no argument here that that is the right call. <laughs> I'm like trying to talk myself into picking Jar of Greed. I'm like, oh, well, what if he draws a better card than the ones that I confiscated? Awful. Terrible. Go ahead. Th this is where I'm going to like Pot of Greed and then Reckless Greed into all the necessary combo pieces and win that way. But I will draw. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think I will do... Mm, actually, I don't know how similarly I want to take the line here. I'll go ahead and normal summon this DD warrior lady that you know about. Shocker. Sure. Uh, let's go to the battle phase. Let's hit in. No, it's magician. Okay, so you get the confiscation back. It's fine. I will go to main two. You don't want to banish my magician? Oh, no, you can have it. That's fine. rookie mistake. I, you know what? If if that's my mistake, like your mistake was giving me the giant true nade last game, then that's fine by me. Fair. I shall set. Hmm, I don't want to do this. I'm going to go ahead and set one, two, three cards face down, and I'll let you go. I will draw for turn. Oh, that is a strange one. <gasps> Very odd. So it's Ring of Destruction, Reckless Greed, Jar of Greed. The card in hand is unknown. If it was worth playing, you would have set it. So it's got to be a monster that is less good than a DD Warrior Lady I already know about. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to begin with a Tribe Infecting Virus. Do you have a response? Man, this card is glued to your hand. You're fine. Kind of is, right? I will activate the effect. Um, I'm going to pitch Don Zalu calling warrior. Okay. So DD warrior lady is gone. All right. I will proceed to the battle phase here. I think I'll take it. So that's 16. Sure. Um, I'm going to activate. No, that's so bad. We'll go to main phase two. You're going to bring back that Dawn and rip that last card out of my hand? Is that what your plan was? Into the set ring of destruction doesn't seem particularly good. <laughs> You're assuming I set it. I could have kept it in my hand to play around the fact that you still have confiscation and to double bluff you into not using it. If I get the ring of destruction off the confiscation, I will be ecstatic. <laughs> uh, you should fire it off then and find out. I think I kind of have to. I want to wait until after you've done the jar reckless turn, but there's no impetus for you to do that. It's got to be a monster. No, I'll wait. You're good. Okay, I'll go ahead and draw. Well, that was not great. <laughs> All right, I shall set two cards and I will pass it over. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'll draw for turn, I suppose. Uh, hmm. I'm going to normal summon Makura the Destructor. Yeah, that's a good one. I feel like I can just get the screws on you here. Uh... 36 puts you at 28. It's 32, so you'd be cutting off half my life points exactly with this. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll go to the battle phase, I suppose. Okay, um, I'm gonna activate Ring of Destruction here. I think I'm gonna take out your tribe. <laughs> yeah, seems right. <laughs> yeah, okay, so we'll both take 16 instead, and then you're gonna hit me for 16 with Makira as well. Yeah, deciding if I want to uh, to call here. No reason to continue to bluff this. <laughs> you can call into Don Zalug and mill me two car. <laughs> Broken. I'm, I'm going to call for Tiv. Sure. We'll try this. Let's meet 16. Well, I guess I'll put you on better have it. Uh, Ring of Destruction targeting my own Makura. Oh, shit. Uh, I'll activate Jar of Greed. Draw your last pathetic three cards so I can end this, Alex. <laughs> I'll activate Reckless Greed. Yep. Three cards, Joseph. We were drawing four cards. <laughs> oh God, that really was a bad rip, huh? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad. You got it. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. Are you ready that for the, the most horrible. depressing thing you've ever seen? I sure. had the combo. Oh, uh, I just couldn't it. do it through ring. Oh, man. That's I so was like, unfortunate. I was like, I can tribe uh, sending Makura or sending Chick to call Warrior, then cough it back. Nope, wasn't <laughs> enough. Yeah, Giant Trunade was the unknown you didn't know about. So I actually set Trunade, Ring, and Reckless, and I kept Jar of Greed in my hand because I'm like, oh, if he wants to confiscation that, like, yeah, I'll just let him do it just to see what happens. <laughs> I'll very much I, take the Jar. I yeah. was just trying to mind game you at that point just to make you overthink it. But uh, yeah, all of the rest of these cards were not going to do much. It was a second Trunade, Confiscation, Call the Haunted, and Change of Heart. So uh, yeah, this was uh, this was a clusterfuck. So let, let's go ahead and uh, I want to rematch here. I want to show you the initial composition of this 
deck what this looked like in game one. <laughs> yeah, sure. So now I'm back to the old deck. So now I can show you some of the cards. So we have a cat of ill omen oh to God. get us to call of the haunted by putting it on top of our deck, which in all fairness, is not that bad if we have the ability to like fire off jars of greed, if we can send uh, Makura off of something like a painful choice, or if you have any of the other just draw power in the deck altogether, then it's like not the worst, but it's a way to actually search Call of the Haunted that is, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's bad. Don't get me wrong. This is not good in the slightest, yeah, but no. it's, um, uh, it's something. No, I, in composition of the deck, I mean, you can see mine splayed out here in front of you. I think we both came to the consensus that the hard card to find is Call of the Haunted. It's actually yes. shocking. I think you can kind of get away with finding the combo pretty much every game. I mean, I certainly had access to it, both games one, two, and three. I just didn't end up going for it. Just by virtue of reinforcement of the army being crazy and the draw spells in this format being insane like mirage of nightmare pot of greed card destruction um morphing jar they all mean over the course of a long game you're gonna find makura plus uh, chick the yellow call is just really difficult to locate i don't dislike a cat of ill omen i do dislike having to be all in on this one interaction so what's so funny about this and i told you about this a little bit during side decking but i didn't say it on camera so i was actually playing a deck that was almost identical to what you're currently playing here that everyone's seeing on screen Right. And right before we started recording, I actually found, I think it was a Pojo article that had this version of the deck. And so part of me oh. felt like, well, you know, I did say I was going to get Makura Chick OTK. And so I guess I should maybe play the deck in its purest form. So initially I was just going to splash it like you did here. And to be fair, splashing this isn't the worst. Like you said, it's actually not that difficult to get to this combo because reinforcement of the army just adds a lot of consistency to get to the monsters. We still have painful choice. There's actually a fair bit of uh, avenues to be able to get to the cards that you need. Again, mm. Call of the Haunted being a bit of the outlier here. But when I saw this, I'm like, I have to give this a shot. I know this is god awful and is never going to work. I mean, if Call of the Haunted were at three copies, then maybe this would have been a little bit better. But I mean, it, this is just something that like you would see someone play on the playground in like fourth grade, right? Someone would try to find some gimmicky way to resolve some stupid combo with Makiura, which by the way, thank God this card is banned. I cannot believe this card doesn't activate in the slightest. <laughs> I actually, um, so two things. Firstly, absolutely. This deck is pure. No, no, no. Give me one more turn. Something cool will happen. I promise. Yeah. Energy yeah. is 100%. Uh, but secondly, I think Maki's actually not that bad. I played a lot with the unerotted version because for those of you who don't remember why this card was unreleased, the errata effectively neuters it, but because of the way product releases are designed in the TCG, there was a period of a week and a half where it was legal at its old errata because it was unupdated, because it hadn't yet been released in a product in which the errata had been printed. And during that week, you could play Makura FTK. <laughs> It was just really bad. <laughs> Trap yeah. cards that draw you cards have pretty much come not far at all in the time since uh, we were playing decks like this and now. In fact, Reckless Greed, a card printed in, what, 2003, is still the best option for this type of deck. <laughs> uh, so it's so funny to see it on the limited list here. I do think what? that Makura is just good in a vacuum. It's got so much attack. 1,600. There's good traps in the format already in Ring of Destruction and Reckless. It's strong. What I also think was done here was this was a bit of a preemptive hit. So we don't receive the next ban list until I believe six months from this point in time. And mm -hmm. this is when Makira the Destructor does get banned. However, the main reason I feel that this card was banned was because in the OCG, they had the original Makira Exchange of the Spirit yes. FT which is what made this card so terrifying. Their product releases were in such a way that Exchange of the Spirit and Makiura the Destructor were actually legal at the same time, where that was the best version of this deck. It, all you basically did was, instead of trying to effectively do this gimmicky OTK with Chick the Yellow, you would actually just mill half of your deck and then Exchange of the Spirit and your opponent would have no cards and automatically deck themselves pretty much. And yeah. that is how you would win the game. And so because of the TCG releases, Makira came out in Dark Beginning, and I believe Exchange of the Spirit did not come out until a little bit later in 2005, maybe early 2006. I don't remember for sure, but nonetheless, they 
preemptively hit this card before Exchange of the Spirit was legal. I think it was a Shonen Jump promo, if my memory serves. It was a oh, weird God. card to acquire. And yeah. so, yeah, and then Makira and Exchange of the Spirit could just never exist in the same format after the OCG saw what the card did, and that's why you see the card banned and did not get unbanned until it was ultimately errated. What is it, within the past year at the time of recording this video? Yeah, I don't understand why it was errated. Who was clamoring to play Makiora again? But, um, as as you said, the Exchange of the Spirit FTK was just so absolutely strong. I believe it was available pretty much from the outset of Yu-Gi-Oh! Like in 2002 in the OCG. There's some yeah. really good write-ups I recommend checking out on Road to the King that yes. are debilitating. They really just like instill the fear of Makiora into your heart. And the fear was so great that this deck, this garbage deck <laughs> that Alex and I played, is responsible for getting Chick the Yellow semi-limited during GOAT format. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you can't play three of this card in GOAT format because they're afraid of some bullshit like this happening. You know, Joseph, maybe we're just not smart enough to figure out how to play this deck to its Could full be. potential because clearly Chick the Yellow was also needing to get hit on top of Makiura getting banned because they didn't want any more Call of the Haunted limited, by the way, shenanigans with Chick the Yellow. I mean, I guess you could cycle with other stuff, but not multiple times in the same time. Turn, I just was, don't understand. Was this the first instance of Konami's TCG brain kicking in? They look at this combo and they think, yeah, yeah, Chick the Yellow's the problem. <laughs> Yo, we gotta get this card out of here. It's just too good. Oh, man. But it's. I'm happy that we both played this because, A, this was a colossal nightmare of a video for one but two i'm happy because we actually still have a lot of other choices to play for the yes. next episodes yes. i mentioned earlier that we still have several months before the next ban list comes out and we actually have i believe two more product releases minimum that's just core sets i believe rise of destiny as well as flaming eternity and so the format doesn't change a whole lot from here but there's still other decks to explore like we kind of played warrior toolbox this episode you can call it that but it wasn't like fully fledged warrior your toolbox because we had right. to play this garbage to you know facilitate the makiura otk side of it but we didn't get to show off like chaos warrior i mean that's yep. a cool deck there's just plenty of other decks that we still have the option to play and so the wheels just going to continue to just get replaced out with other decks that you're going to see in the future episodes i will say one thing you will not get me to play protector of the sanctuary it's not gonna okay, happen okay <laughs> fine 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 if you, you want that to happen that's anyway, on you <laughs> if you get last turn anyway that's what you're going to play regardless so i i don't even care <laughs> Uh, whatever makes you say that. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the History of Yu-Gi-Oh! Looks like I'll be donning the Shirt of Shame next time around after playing this garbage, though. I probably deserve it. We do have to shout out our patrons, as always. So big shouts to Sean Alling Jr., Shadow1317, Showtagonist, Neo Cypher Slacker, Ikra Iron Fang, Tim00x3, Brian Dancer, Ngayoko, Rasmus, Pony Stark, Part 2, Joshua Wiley, Dan the Man Hoban, Leah Roche, Michael Dente, Synchro Guy, Ole, Thomas Nelson, Jarvis Martin, Timothy Chen, Emil Cohen, Brother Paul, Logan Thomas, Benjamin Fuller, Pure Ace, Yu-Gi-Oh! Hot Pack, Sylvia Wilds, Dragonlord, Nehru Celeste, Jesse Wood, Chris Hood, GW, Jordan Coons, Lumpy, Dolly Wop, Shane Reese, Rock Lee 325, Peter Gregory, Mystic Walk, True Nerdgasm, and Dre Connick. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.